Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I thought I'd do an overview of what we've got coming up in uh, the next few months as far as welding repairs that need doing from the engine bay back. As you know, my priority is to stay focused on just a few elements at a time so you don't get overwhelmed and all that stuff. So I've got my subframe on the go, the rear axle as you know, and the front engine bay. Now before I go on to weld that front surround on, I thought now that we've caught the car on the uh, auto dolly, I can uh, kind of do an assessment of what's coming down the pipeline. So, um, so I know what's coming and maybe make plans, look for parts, chat to you guys as well on the uh, YouTube channel and also on the Facebook group and get some feedback of, from people that have done it before. So what I'm going to do is use this video to show you what we've got coming up, some of what you've probably already seen. You haven't seen a lot of this side and the damage on this side, so this is Halloween early. This horror show is going to be a bit, but it's not too bad if you break it down into the elements. I'll talk about that. So let's get started on the rear because you've seen a lot of the front stuff, you know, from earlier videos. But let's start from the rear passenger side over there and work our way around, and then I'll show you what I've got planned and ideas for the future. First of all, the obvious one is this horrendous patch that someone's just slapped over whatever damage is uh, behind there and just, uh, you know, just tried to hide it and they doped a load of stuff all over it to hide it, of course. You can already see that there's some rust penetrating through this patch, so this was obviously done some time ago. So that's going to need cutting out to reveal whatever damage is behind there okay now it looks to me like there's been some spot welding i'd love to hear from you whether that because that to me doesn't look factory something's gone on here but i may be wrong because it looks beaded up here incorrect okay obviously uh, that's going to need cutting out and i'm going to check with my other 108s now obviously this is a 109 so this doesn't look right to me the way this is hunked out here i'm going to check on my other cars like i say but any 109 owners if you could uh, let me know because obviously this needs to be corrected this poor repair here but i'm thinking this profile should really carry on a graceful arc there but um yeah any feedback would be appreciated on that now obviously we've got our regular holes here which is going to, I'll have access to that once I remove this section of the rocker. Midway through the section, that's pretty good, and we've done our repair earlier on uh, up the front there. I'm about here where there's some small holes in the floor pan that I can address. The rest of the floor pan on this side is actually in pretty good shape. Obviously, we repaired the bottom of this door that was all rusted out. Uh, so, once I open up here, I can replace the jacking point and all that good stuff. This is the least of my problems, this area. The under dog leg and the box section under here and underneath this is good. I've already scraped that, so I'm not going to crawl under this side. Um, so that's that on the inner arch. On the outer, very typical damage here. Looks like this has been stressed. And there's a little corrosion back here, just a little bit underneath here. So this section obviously is going to have to be removed, corroded here. This, this section here is probably the worst external corrosion visible on the whole car. This small hole here and then this missing lip here. So all of that's got to be cut out. The inner wheel arch attended to and then this section re replaced. Now... I may well buy the repair sections, as you know, some of you guys, this section is available uh, from uh, MB Classics. And uh, I may do that, or I might just cut that section off of my spare 108 car. And uh, that will also give me an indicator of what's going on behind and use any original Mercedes metal. That's what I like to do, say fabricating. And uh, also it tells me the way it's all constructed back there, which is... You know, obviously a pinch weld of some kind here. So the inner connects to this lip. So that's that on this side. Obviously the trunk pans, both sides, I've already got those new. I've had those for some time. They've got to be welded in. The rear valance of the car right at the back where the fuel cap is, that's in perfect shape. There's nothing wrong with that, as is the trunk 
uh, floor, so to speak, is in perfect condition. But what I'm going to do is take you over to the other side and show you where the real work starts. Okay, there you go. Look at that lovely mess. So um, you can see again right here, someone's patched in, just slapped it straight over, and that patch has just rotted away. Uh, and then this box section here has been badly repaired before and so that's all just rotted away from itself and it looks to me this is very similar to the other side so possibly on the 108 109 model this was cut away here this little arch here so I want to make sure that I get this right as it should be and I've still got to remove some of this sealer you can see there's another patch here poorly done so all of this sealer has got to come off to reveal the damage on the inner wheel arch. And let me get under the car and I'll show you all the, the bad stuff here. So there we go, again, another poorly executed patch here. Uh, they haven't even tried to hide that really. That was all doped up with under seal. It's good here, but you can see the damage leaks to here. So this section's gonna have to be all rebuilt. Uh, all the way down to this brake hold down area here that's unique to the 109. Um, the dog leg, this is in good shape, but the box section, let's see if I can get the light in here, on the inside here, is gone. Okay, this is all rock. This is good, this section here, and all of this is very good and solid. So this is where the main damage of the whole car really is here. We're sure we've got rocker damage, but that's uh, more external. So this is the more tricky area. Um, you can see this uh, little complicated lap joint here. This is tongued on to the box section. So I'm gonna have to be cutting away a lot to get in deep and uh, to start building myself out. Uh, no good trying to do repairs on the outside when it's further deeper in. So. My approach is going to see uh, dig in far back and then build my way out of it. And uh, luckily I've got the other cars that I can use for templates and measurements and just confirm that I've got it all right. Um, so then I'm going to move over here in a second and show you what's going on there. So this is a pretty major part of the damage on the car. The other side, as I say, is in really good shape. As we come along here, we're good, and then further back to the floor pan here, that is your typical replacement panel, which isn't too bad. The inner wheel arch lip doesn't seem to be in bad shape on this side for some reason. We've got a little rot here, but obviously this outer one is going to come away to be able to get to that one. Obviously these are all brake lines and air suspension lines. This is for the rear brake here. Oops. Rear brakes here and the junction here. And these are the two remaining air lines feed up to the front. And uh, as I said on the group site, I'm replacing all suspension, brake and fuel lines. And I think they're nickel lines, are they? Nickel uh copper lines i think um which are easier to flex and more resistant to corrosion and i'm making note of where all these brackets are because all these brackets will get replated uh yellow chromate new rubbers on them and uh so they the holes don't get filled up i'll leave the bolts sticking out so when the under seal and everything goes on we don't lose them uh i've removed the uh fuel pump shroud that was under here and clearing the decks really so it gives me access to eventually clean all this up did come up on the forum on the group site about when I do get to that stage where the car's tilted on its side that I'll be using a dry ice to get this off make a lot shorter work of it do a thorough job and be easier on the old body so rent a machine to get all this gunk off so let's get over to the rocker in an outer and show you what's going on there. Oh, well, before I go to that side, let me show you. This is the underside where the fuel tank sits, obviously. All in good shape, actually. Beam is all good. All this section is very good. Just kind of just dirty, really. Uh, so we're all just clean here. 
Now, just before I go diving underneath the car, um, I removed the two doors yesterday. And uh, obviously because this is a unibody, we've got to make sure that the car stays true uh, and doesn't get out of alignment when any of the repairs are made. Um, so what I may get to today, if I've got time today, I'm going to weld up some plates. And I'll show you what I have in mind. Normally, the normal way of doing it is a crisscross direction in these door apertures on all four and then some connecting straps or rods going across to anchor it this way so then you can safely remove larger sections without interrupting the body structure and an alignment so um a lot of the time i've seen people welding them to these b pillars and uh, c pillars a pillars and all that so what i thought i would do um is we've got these hinge plates here okay so i'm gonna bolt on a lump of steel here you know maybe even as thick as quarter inch three sixteenths or something just bolt that piece of plate steel on there also onto these hinge points and use those bolt holes there and so they're blank pieces of steel then i'll run some cross straps uh probably uh, one inch box section to crisscross and reinforce these apertures so we don't get any body alignment. And then I can just weld to those pieces of steel and then not onto the bodywork, you see? And then when I go to remove them, I can just unbolt them if I need to temporarily unbolt them and then just rebolt them back into position again. Um, so that's my idea anyway, just to do that and then do some cross strapping across as well uh, before I cut any major pieces of metal out. Don't want any alignment issues. So anyway, that's that. Um, this is the obvious damage on the outer rocker. Not too bad of a deal because I have that 108 out the front that I'm going to, that's got a good rocker on this side. So I'm going to detach that and use that. And then somewhere probably towards this middle area here, I'll make the four inch extension panel because obviously it's a 109, four inches longer. I will make an extension panel uh, to fill that in and weld all that up all steel obviously all 16 gauge because that's what this is 16 gauge on the rockers so that is that um, so that will take care of basically the outer rocker problem I've already got um, the jacking points here you go these are the jacking points this yeah I think this is the rear one that gets uh, welded into place and also what's nice if you do have to make an inner section of rocker this gives you the perfect profile to make out uh, the rocker so that's that this is, a, this is the front driver side one and i've got another one lying around for the rear there so i've got those ready to go in uh, so as far as the outer rocker that's pretty straightforward now let's dive underneath and show you what's going on with the various layers oh one more thing I'm going to talk to, I noticed John, I think it's John Heller, did a 109 back in 2017. New floor pans, all that stuff, all that good stuff. Did a lovely job by the looks of it. Um, now, floor pan on that side is not bad. It's got a couple of little dents in it that I think I can take care of. But this one has a severe dent in the bottom and it's oil can. So it, it will, every time you push it, it just pops back. Now... It has a little bit of rust on this lip along here, and I'm weighing the options of taking this whole floor pan out and replacing this floor pan. And just like the uh, uh, rocker, this is a four inch longer floor pan with a 109. Um, I do have that spare one out front, so I could take a section out of that to add. That is not too big of a deal, but um, I do need to get some feedback about removing this uh, floor pan on this side only. Uh, it's pretty straightforward as far as detaching it from this box section and the lip along the uh, inner rocker. But we do have a triangular reinforcement beam coming across. I'd love to talk to people about that. I'm assuming it's just a spot welded beam, reinforcement beam just on this side. And attachment to the uh, central transmission tunnel. So any tips on removing that uh, would be appreciated. Um, if I do go ahead, my thought is I'm going to cut most of it out roughly and then it will reveal, I'll dig into the corners to see the connection points and then clean up, get it prepped and then 
spot weld the rest other one in sounds pretty easy but it's a ton of work but uh yeah if it's worth doing it's worth doing properly as they say and uh, i think i'm assuming the c anchor points do not come with the replacement rock uh floor pan so those locations i will probably make up a dummy frame to make sure those locations go back in the exact proper uh, place to make sure the runners go back so let's dive underneath and see what we've got going on under there so i hope you can see that this is where we were further on here on the inner rocker so we've obviously got rot here completely through again another dodgy patch job along here then then we've got this layered section here okay that connects this is the box section that we were showing you earlier that's rotted out here so this is lapped on to the inner box section okay so it's a series of uh, boxes here okay and then the floor pan and then a panel here now obviously to address all of this okay this is obviously the floor pan which i'll probably end up just replacing um once this comes out then you can access this and then be able to repair this in a section here okay so the inner rocker so we can't do any of this until we get this out uh, essentially go deep and build from the inside out it's the only logical way of doing it uh, it's the same with cars it's the same with the furniture game you can't be patching up here if you haven't taken care of the low stuff um, so uh, that is the plan of action to go in deep get that out and then rebuild uh, lots of photographs lots of video and lots of reference photos from the group and other sources to make sure we're doing it correctly and looks like this has been repaired at some point this little guard plate here again this will probably have to be fabricated or repaired and straightened out uh, so as we move along you can see the inner rocker is completely shot on the lower section the inner wall area where my hand is inside the car is actually in good shape it's all of the floor of the rocker and I cut this section out here okay I just cut a slot out of the uh, inner rocker just to give me access to sort of see how bad it was so I cut that all the way down and you can see some you probably can't see from the camera angle but you can see there's some light surface rust on the inner box section but where the main part is is the lower where moisture is gathered and then you can see this is the worst part of the floor where it's torn right by the seat mount here uh, probably because he's bouncing down that darn muddy road and bumpy road it's torn the steel here and the lap joint where it laps onto the inner rocker is all rotted away and you can see maybe you can't see very well but you can see how it's oil can and bent in the lower pan here quite badly this is the triangular box section i was talking about on the driver's side and this is the inner uh, uh box rail you know the main strengthening rail that comes part way underneath here so obviously the floor is all spot welded here this section here is where the uh, transmission mount is here so i'd like some feedback about the way this is lapped onto here any feedback what was that anyway any feedback would be great about disconnecting this floor pan uh, it's obviously a tremendous amount of work but uh you know once you get stuck into something i find you know it starts to move along and when you stop and think about it this obviously looks really horrible okay but even if it was just this big you're still doing the same thing but just over a longer section so once new metal starts to go in you start to see progress that's what i find anyway so and like I say, this uh, outer rocker is obviously completely shot. And this is the final touch to go in. And then we'll remount doors and all that to make sure we've got alignment correct. And obviously a spot weld along now. Or rosette weld, I should say. And let's go back up 
into the car again. The only place where the box section on the interior and the inner rocker has come through is similar to that side we repaired oh, some time ago. It's rusted out here. If you can see that, there's a rust hole right there. So another reason floor could come out here is to repair this whole box section here. All of course with 16 gauge. And the floor is obviously lap jointed to the foot plate here. Um, and I'm assuming it's all lap jointed all the way along the transmission tunnel. This video is kind of obviously showing you the uh, damage or extent of the work that needs to be done on this car, but also it gives you a good clue as if you're overlooking at a 108, 109 uh, car, uh, key places where they're vulnerable. You know, uh, the basic rudimentary check is pulling those carpets back, checking all this inner edge where moisture gathers from leaky window seals and what have you, um, and sits on wet carpet and then rots its way into that inner rocker. Outer rocker again, use a magnet, use, uh, use your own common sense to see where moisture gathers. Um, to make sure it's an original car and not been poorly repaired before and keep an eye out for those patches that people have slapped on you you sometimes they hide them really well um, and uh, they're a little difficult to see but uh, a lot of the time when you see those patches it's hiding something that's a lot worse it's right up to this section here but as you know we repaired that pretty effectively on the other side so once we get in there it's just a question of making up sections with the correct material and uh, getting it welded in again. There, so I think it was referenced about the uh, reinforcement plate. Someone talked about the cracking of the frame. This frame was never cracked. I reinforced it with this uh, 12 gauge steel, so it's immensely strong now, and welded in washers and everything. So we checked our alignment and that all works nicely. So that all cleaned up pretty good. So we're really getting into the heart of it now, which is a lot of fun. And um, like anything, once you first look at something, you might go, whoa, you know, you step back, but have a little, have, have a sit on it and think it through, try and hit it logically, you know, step by step to uh, plan your approach. Don't just go tearing into things and ripping things out because you want to save some of these old rusty parts to give you clues of how the shapes and the fab to help you fabricate the new pieces. So don't just go cutting them out and throwing them away uh, before you um, fabricate something new. That's if you can't buy uh, new body panels from Mercedes. And these 109 outer rockers, uh, I don't believe are any no longer available actually. So luckily I've got a spare car to be able to help me with that. And then all the stuff under here is going to have to be just fabricated. And with the correct thickness of steel, all that good stuff and uh, proper welding techniques and taking precautions that all the members are properly treated so they don't rust out again. And then what I was thinking, once this has got all frame coating inside it, then I'm going to inject it with... Um, a uh, you know that oil based stuff like wax oil as well that will get pumped in there making sure my drainage holes are clear um, so we won't have this problem in the future this stand has been wonderful give me that extra five inches of working height so it was my first day hitting it yesterday with uh, on the stand and it made it so much easier i say i can't believe how much easier it was so if you have the inclination to make one highly recommend that let me get that out of the way highly recommend making a stand uh, getting the car up as high as possible and as far as future to get this car tilted on its side i haven't decided yet i've got two different ideas rolling around my head to get this on its side so we can treat the floor properly get all fuel lines brake lines all that stuff in um, but that's for the future um, now as far as all the door hardware let me switch to the doors now uh, very typical the door window was jammed on this side and very very typical the windows get jammed up and then it puts massive stress on these window regulators you can see how 
completely oops, completely uh, twisted and gimped up this one is I do have a spare one kicking around so that's not too bad keep all the hardware together make sure you label it because you will forget because this will probably not go back on for a very long time um, I'm keeping all the wood aside obviously because I'll be repairing small things this one's not too bad let me have a look this one's got typical veneer curling like that it's very easy to deal with I recommend Type Bond 3 glue it gives you plenty of working time and Type Bond 3 is a waterproof glue and uh, just some tape to pull that back in you might want to soften this one see that's quite stiff there a little water on there to soften it and train it back before you glue it back in so yes yeah, it's, it's curling off there i'll we'll call that just in time by the looks of it and then we'll see i'll show you all that finishing stuff when i get to that stage uh, obviously this door's got to be completely stripped down for prepping for paint all of the inner channels, I won't pull it out now, some surface rust on the bottom there that is just purely surface that I'll clean up and treat. This is the rear door. This is the area where the wires and the um, vacuum lines come out for the central door locking. And I noticed some rust damage here. Um, some moisture has got trapped here, and ru rusted out the hole a little bit. So that will need cleaning up and some metal welded back in there. A tiny bit of surface rust has formed right here by the seal. Okay, but overall this door is not in bad shape. Uh, again, on the lower part of the door we've got some surface rust um, due to moisture getting in it. Neither of these doors had the plastic sheeting on, so someone had been here, well they've obviously been in here to paint it blue uh, from the original 050 white. Uh, so they took the time to do that paint it all blue but they never put the plastic back on or someone had removed it at a later date from there so i don't know if it, those of you in the know you know how heavy these doors are heaven knows how heavy they are but they are heavy um let me show you one other interesting feature of the rear doors i may have mentioned this before but as you know this is a 109 door and it's uh, four inches longer than the 108s but you can see the extension plate here see where it's spot welded here this uh extension that's the longer wheelbase car extension you see so you can see these fitments transferred to here for the 108 car here's the door switch and this is the one for the 108 car without this extension plate in as you can see everything from the mount for the um, central door locking for the 108 car so you can see that just added this piece in here it's kind, of, it's kind of funny to see that but you know just a little feature but this door is in really nice shape overall everything's tidy and trim the clips are here for the wiring still got the sound deadening in there i think that's probably original but you can see a little bit of surface rust down the bottom but not bad not like that other door that we repaired some time ago Luckily I've only got one of those to do and hopefully the window regulator on this is good. Overall these doors are in nice shape, no dents, things of that nature. The chrome for the uh, 109 uh, doors is in very nice shape around the surrounds. I think one of them has a little dent in. Just thought I'd show you, this is the uh, diaphragm for the central door locking I believe. Yeah, this is for this door. Okay, and this is mounted, two screws here, mounted on the inside. So this is the inside of the door. Okay, and these are the inlet and outlet for the vacuum. And it's just a simple diaphragm, this way and that way, that operates this rod that connects up to the switch at the top, you know, the little pull switch. And then there's this little ingenious little locking clip that pushes in and flips up and then it comes uh, pushes it up and down um, and obviously these kind of things this is the sort of thing that gets neglected over the years lubrication obviously these diaphragms it's all rubber stuff in it so this is the part that could potentially leak and cause it not to work properly but they're again they're they're removable pretty easily two screws and a little clip and then pull the vacuum lines out and uh, there you go, so I thought that was kind of cool.
Okay, to give you some idea of how to get the window out of here, okay. First of all, you've got these runners that run up here from the door. There's a bolt on the end here, and then a small bolt right above the door handle there that loosens that one up, okay. And then what I did, I removed the little rubber strip here, this kind of cloth felt uh, covered strip from the here, okay, just leave it those off with this clip, that comes off easy. Uh, and then this stuff in this channel, I think this is called wind lace. Um, and this is obviously got a need replacing, and this is just all trashed, you know, this pulls out of the channel, okay. And this is the full length of it, this giant big thing here, okay, it's a little longer because there's still some left on that channel there. Right, now we can get that runner out of there. So, this is how this is mounted in there, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure this windlay stuff and uh, see how much that we're going to need of that stuff. So believe it or not, to do all this driver's side uh, on the 109, which is the same as the 108, um, is seven foot six of this stuff per door. So nearly eight foot a door, which is more than what you'd expect. But uh, so anyway, so that is good reference for me in the video as well when I come to order it. Another thing I want to show you before I go, uh, this is the mechanism for the quarter lights on the, uh, on the front door here. Look at that. 50 years old. No wonder it lasts 50 years. Look at all this, all solid steel and uh, coated, beautifully made, you know. I mean, that's built to last, isn't it? That's a lovely bit of kit there. So, clean all that, lubricate that, make that all nice. Luckily, the rubber seals on these quarter lights are in really good shape, so I'll probably end up saving those. So, with that rail released and the wind lace out the top, can probably get this guy out here with a little jiggling around. There we go. There we go. So, got the glass out. I want to give you another look at the driver's side regulator. You can see how distorted it is. Hopefully, you can see that on camera. Uh, the rear plate is all twisted and contorted and binding the teeth against the uh, the chassis there. Uh, my 68 has a steel chassis instead of this car stuff that doesn't seem to last as well. Um, and the ones that you can buy now, a lot of them are kind of cheap. And, and this is all stressed as well, this locator thing, this arm here, really bent and twisted. So you can see without proper lubrication and puts a ton of stress on this. I'm surprised this hasn't shattered. So, as I say, I think I have one of these. Now, a lot, a common problem with these is that the ends um, get kind of chewed up, okay? And the chassis are okay, but you need to replace these. So what I did on my 68, because I wanted to keep the steel chassis I ordered one with this crappy chassis and literally it arrived broken <laughs> but it didn't matter to me because I busted this off and I drilled out this and reattached this section and the arm to my steel chassis with a series of you know I had to tap it out and put some thread locker on and some washers and it's worked for the last eight years flawlessly so I just scavenged the gear assembly off of uh, one of those later ones this plate could come off and gears in there need lubricating but that's for another day but you can see how this lubrication turns into almost like cement so uh something you might want to do next time you have your door panels off is clean all this off with say a wd4 or a brake cleaner and then reapply some grease and then it'll be good for another many years those of you wanting to replace the door seals on these old doors just from my experience, when I first got my, well, not first, but when I, I went back to buying a 108 back in 2014, I've had them on and off since the early 90s. Um, 
uh, when I first bought the car, my brown roof 108, my 4.5 needed a new door seal on the uh, driver's side and uh, it was really ignorance on my part so I tried some of those um, different door seals from I think Turkey or something. I tell you, don't waste your money, that honestly. You might as well just take two or three hundred dollars and throw it in the trash because they're so bad. Okay, don't bother. Just buy the Mercedes rubber. It's obviously very expensive, but if you're going to keep the car for a long period of time, save up and buy the correct rubber because honestly, it is really honestly a waste of time. And every time you open and close the door, it will irritate the hell out of you. So buy the good rubber and that's what's going to go on here even if I just have to save my money and and uh, go for those that's what I'm going to do and um, so that's one thing and also it goes for the obviously engine mounts things of that nature I had a similar experience with my six this one out here this this six cylinder when I was first back into it um, let me go over here when I was first back into it I bought engine mounts because I was ignorant to it, you know. I'd come back in 2014. I thought oh, I need the engine mount, so I bought the ones uh, Mile. I think they are. I believe it's Mile, and great for a few years. But that was in 2016. I replaced them. What are we 22 now? They need redoing again. Total waste of money. So you're better off spending the extra. Get the proper Mercedes ones. There are obviously things you can save money on you know like you know go with Zimmerman rotors or something like that and different pads and things of that nature but some of the rubber stuff especially or all of the rubber stuff don't don't waste your money with the other crap that's my two penneth anyway did it look nice without those overriders on <laughs> anyway well there's a first for everything here so I was taking the uh, center console out and look at that that's uh a snake skin shedding underneath the console a little baby snake of some kind so there you go here he is how's it going man what are you doing uh nothing working doing a little work on the jeep what are you up to i'm doing some more videos on the on the merc oh yeah just cleaning up the bottom welding it no it's because you can see we've got it on the cart now so mm -hmm. uh just having a little tidy up just cleaning up underneath just shooting video show how it, how easy it is to work with a dolly basically oh nice what yeah. uh what specifically well all the the access on these you know with yeah. the dolly like that and because yeah. i've got a load of work to do on the side don't i yeah that's cool that's cool it's it's a very uh i see where you're headed with it but it's a very it's it's targeted for a very specific audience for it's only for mercedes well yeah it's a mercedes channel isn't it i mean it just seems a little seems like you got blinders on but you know it's not my channel <laughs> bullshit <laughs> No, Will. Honestly, though, if you can weld a Mercedes, right? Because yeah. these are these are pretty, you know. Well, I wouldn't say overly common, but fairly complicated to weld up. If you can weld a Mercedes up and get it, do it factory and do it right, you can weld any shit up, can't you? Zoom in up there. Any shit up. <laughs> <laughs> so, what are you doing here today, Will? Actually, I'm doing a little metal fabrication myself. Come on, you got to show us. <laughs> so, anyway. All right, so that's it with the Mercedes today. We're going to go and have a look at what Will's been up with uh, America's finest. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the steering column, excuse me, the steering arm was loose inside the column. Okay. Uh, a little bracket came loose. How long oh, have you been here? Two and a half days. Two and a half days, okay. And now All I've right, lost, yeah. here's a Sprite can that I cut up. Only Be quality here. Listen, it's it's all or nothing. It's, this is American made, baby. Okay. <laughs> so right. we lost this little. There's a there's a connector here, right? Yeah. Now now, mind you, I had this tore apart down to here to where it's just the knuckle, just for for this to actuate okay. properly. Nice action. Yeah. yeah. Look at that. Straight from the factory, boys. Is this hey, easy? It is, Matt. Yeah. So uh, look, our ignitions. We're we're we're. we're so anyways. Here's the pin that we have lost. Oh, okay. Uh, it's for the blinker. So I figured, You're what fine. better? What better to use? I'm gonna quad layer a sprite can that's been cut up. Okay. And then we're gonna custom fabricate it <laughs> to okay. fit in this little channel. I get your face in because you seem proud about <laughs> that. <laughs> I don't know what else to do. Okay. You know, not everybody no, has. 
Not everybody has the luxury of working on a Mercedes, Sean. No, that's true. Some of us peasants are just down here, you know, feeding Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Oh, 70 mile an hour. Can you get that fast or? No, she does 50 smoothly. Oh, no, that's the RPM, in it? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 100, she, 100 she still only does 50 smoothly. really <laughs> yeah. really yeah oh but look at this we got an auxiliary switch for the lights right one of the mounting brackets is broken but okay. hey okay <laughs> all right well this is this is awesome mullet grease mullet grease <laughs> yeah you do it right you know i'll go on mate eh? <laughs> it's so, so no, bad straight, it's so bad straight up everyone <laughs> will so is bad. actually trying to sell this truck you know Oh, he's actually trying to sell this truck, aren't you, Will? Hey, you know, she made it 2,886 miles without a hiccup. From Vermont? From Vermont to California. Yeah, not bad, eh? Not bad. It was a little drafty, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I was going to tell you, right? It's funny. Hey, I was driving across the Midwest, and I couldn't, the heater's full blast. And I'm like, why the hell is it so freaking cold in here? I had two jackets on. The breeze that comes through right here is offensive. And then, not, then, then I, the breeze that came through there. I get to Missouri, and I'm like, okay, I got to look into it. And I pick up the carpet on the floorboard, and I, it's Fred Flintstone right to the bottom. Yeah. I can see the freeway. There's a hole this big. That's so, yeah, just great. There's a bit of a draft on the driver's side, but... Um, you know, so I was right. I was actually going to say, you know when people prepare a car for sale, yeah. you know what's a giveaway? Mm -hmm. Is that when you clean the tires like that, <laughs> do you know what I mean? You don't even need to finish that. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? They look so, they look like um, lipstick on a pig. <laughs> 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 All right. That's All right. enough from Will today. Yeah. Thanks, Will, for showing hey, us. Hey, John, you know what? Thanks for having me, and thank you for the opportunity. That's all right. Good luck with the sale. <laughs> and uh, you got a laptop. Are you doing some final tuning, or is that oh, just no, to look up YouTube do, channels? Some editing for my YouTube channel. Okay. All right. <laughs> all right. Thanks a lot, Will. Yeah, thanks. Well, right. thanks a lot for watching, guys. Uh, as you can see, there's quite a bit to do, but uh, with a step-by-step -step approach, should be able to get through it without too much hassle. Um, please uh, comment uh, if you think... Uh, you got some advice for me that I should know about. And uh, yeah, we'll get cracking on uh, next weekend. I'll probably start hitting the front. I've been saying it for months, I know, but uh, I get a little distracted onto other things, but we do need to get that all tidied up, welded in, and um, uh, kind of finished off at the front there so you feel like you've completed something before you go on to the, to the rest of it. So um, anyway, please hit like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.